Reading is from Proverbs chapter 31. Please be seated. An excellent wife who can find. She is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands. She is like the ships of the merchant. She brings her food from afar. She rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household and portions for her maidens. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. She dresses herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable. Her lamp does not go out at night. She puts her hands to the distaff and her hands hold the spindle. She opens her hand to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of snow for her household, for all her household are clothed in scarlet. She makes bed coverings for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them. She delivers sashes to the merchant. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful, and beauty is vain. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her works praise her in the gates. O Lord, have mercy on us. Second reading is from Titus chapter 2. But as for you, teach what accords with sound doctrine. Older men are to be sober minded, dignified, self controlled, sound in faith and love and in steadfastness. Older women, likewise, are to be reverent in behavior, not slanderers or slaves to much wine. They are to teach what is good and to train the young women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled, pure, working at home, kind, and submissive to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be reviled. Likewise, urge the younger men to be self-controlled. Show yourself in all respects to be a model of good works, and in your teaching show integrity, dignity, and sound speech that cannot be condemned, so that an opponent may be put to shame, having nothing evil to say about us. Bond servants are to be submissive to their own masters in everything. They are to be well-pleasing, not argumentative, not pilfering, but showing all good faith, so that in everything they may adorn the doctrine of God our Savior. For the grace of God has appeared bringing salvation for all, the, all people, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age, waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness, to purify for himself a people for his own possession, who are zealous for good works. Declare these things, exhort, and rebuke with all authority. Let no one disregard you. In the name of Jesus, amen. In 1531, Martin Luther is recorded to have said, 
I wouldn't give up my Katy for France or for Venice. First, because God gave her to me and me to her. Second, because I have often observed that other women have more shortcomings than my Katie, although she too has some shortcomings. They are outweighed by many great virtues. And third, because she keeps faith in marriage, that is, fidelity and respect. Luther would at times write letters to his wife, Katie, Katharina von Bora, he would call her little nicknames. My favorite is probably my Lord Katie. But the most famous one of all is when he called Katie my rib. Harkening back to those words of Genesis when Eve was brought to Adam and he said, This at last is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. Katie is known today as Katerina von Bora, her maiden name, not by her married name, Katie Luther. That tells you how strong and fearsome woman that she was. God knew that only a woman like Katie could be the husband of Martin Luther. Katie would begin her day at 4 a.m. She would manage the Luther home with two small farms to provide funds and food for the many guests and students that they would have at their home. Luther would usually bring home guests that were visiting Wittenberg unannounced for dinner. But Katie never complained. She kept her overly generous husband from, from giving away all their possessions to those in need because Luther had the tendency to not think about what he was really giving away. He was so eager to help that if Katie wouldn't have intervened, he would have given away everything they had. We know her humble beginnings on her path to becoming the First Lady of the Reformation. She was smuggled out of a convent with some other nuns in herring barrels and taken to sanctuary in Wittenberg. And there the former nuns would find husbands, and finally Katie, being the last holdout, was united in holy matrimony to Martin Luther on June 13, 1525. From caretaker of their home, to managing farms, to making sure their finances were in order, to brewing beer even, and raising their children, Katerina von Bora was a God-fearing, loving wife and mother. And the Luthers were blessed with six children, two of whom passed away to be with our Lord, one in infancy and one at the age of 13. And on this day when the church commemorates and gives thanks for Katerina von Bora, we meditate and look back on those words from Proverbs that we just heard. An excellent wife who can find. She is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. Katerina von Bora is an example for us today of a godly, holy woman. While we think of our own day as being a time of self-promotion and self-advancement, it was really no different in the 16th century. Men and women then as now were always looking for ways to gain power and influence over others, and that usually means tearing other people down. But Katerina von Bora was the exact opposite. She supported her husband, she loved him unconditionally. She didn't promote herself, but she put others first, as Scripture admonishes all of us to do, to think less of ourselves and more of others. The Luther home looked nothing like that of those that are on television today, where the husband is portrayed as a bumbling moron and the wife is an overbearing shrew. Martin and Katerina certainly didn't have a perfect house, a perfect home, but they complemented each other. 
And without Katerina, I dare say that the Reformation would probably have taken a much different path. In our divorce-ridden society, we hold up figures like Martin and Katie as examples to follow in marriage. And we would all do well to follow Katie's devotion to Christ and the proclamation of the gospel. She showed us how to live the Christian life in our marriages, families, and communities. She shows that it takes a lot of courage to go about the daily mundane tasks of cooking, of cleaning, of sewing. But she's an example of, of love for Christ and His gospel. But Katie wasn't perfect, nor was her husband. And like you and me, but Christ was the head of their household. And as he forgave the sins of Martin and Katie, so does he forgive you. The gospel of Christ crucified, that Katie saw too that it was preached faithfully by her husband. That gospel is for you. That sets you free from sin, from death, and from the power of the devil. So you, like Katie, can serve one another in your home, in your career, in your community, and in your congregation. So in this busy time of year, both in the world and really in the church too, the, commem the commemoration of Katerina von Bora gives us a chance in this busy season to stop and pause for a moment to think about one particular special person, the pastor's wife. To thank them for their dedication, for their faithfulness in the face of the many hours that their husbands have to spend away from home. For the sake of the gospel, for the sake of preaching the word of Christ and Him crucified. My dear wife, to my rib, Amanda, I love you and I thank God for you. To Pastor Hewan's wife, we thank God for her and for her faithfulness so that you can proclaim the gospel here in this place. To all pastors' wives, like Katie Luther, they hold up their husband's arms and, pro and help proclaim the gospel of Christ the crucified. And so on this day, as we remember and give thanks for Katie Luther, for Katerina von Bora, we remember the love of Christ Jesus our Lord that he had for her, for Luther, and their whole family. That same love that he has for you and for your family and for our entire family here at Christ Lutheran Church. In the name of Jesus, amen. The peace of God which surpasses understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, amen.